First one. First one, no music. Oh, who's it gonna be? Come on, just draw 10. Draw 10. Yup, yup. This is the first one. This is the first one. Fragile Venus, Coconut Buns, thanks for the follows. It's not, it's not Rainbow Papers. I just, come on. It doesn't, she doesn't. Oh, are we one and done? First one, baby? Is it over? <laughs> is it over? Yes, it's, it's done. Oh my god. That's not fair. That's not cool. You know, I, I'm... <laughs> Alright, everyone. That was the summoning session for June. It was a one and done deal. I have spent 200 and I have gone to pity for a character before. I saw in the comments people were asking, what does it take to actually pity for June? Most of all, before we start that, I just want to say... I hope my luck spreads to you and all the best wishes if you are pulling for June, all right? So if you want to pity for June, you just go to exchange lineup and then you have to acquire 300 points. In order to acquire 300 character exchange points, you need 45k gems, all right? Now, one of the things that is really difficult about this is these exchange lineup points, they do not carry over. So you have to accumulate 300 or more. You won't be able to try any gotcha other than normal until you use either the points to recruit a new character or choose a character you already own to get divine amulets. Gotcha draws during tutorials will not award character points. Your character exchange points will be reset to zero and converted into an equal number of skip tickets, even if you have over 300 points when validity period ends. So whenever this ends, it's gonna turn into skip tickets and validity period and details of character exchanges are subject to change without prior notice, all right? So pretty much the character exchange points that are acquired are probably going to be turned into skip tickets, which is fine with me. Just note that it's only usable for this character. The amount will always be one point regardless of how many character stars it has. Pretty much each time you pull, let's say this is 11 right now, and we're just gonna pull right here just to, for an example of sake, right? And hopefully it's nothing too crazy. I know some people have been getting with lucky with single draws, June is probably a banner for folks who don't have too many characters, who have been saving their pulls, don't have Miyako, you don't have Nozomi, or you have Miyako, you have Nozomi, you just want to flesh out your roster a little bit. So that's why you're probably pulling for June, right? So you can see here my character exchange points jump to 11, so I'm guessing now I get 11 skip tickets. This is how this banner works if you're wondering how to pity for, you know, June. The best part about June is not even like her design or anything. She is voiced by Ayako Kawasumi, which is the voice of Saber from FGO. Absolutely amazing. If June could say Excalibur, this would be like the perfect character. But let's go ahead and go into some more details. So I wanted to cover a tank comparison, right? And we are in Mana Grotto covering Nozomi, all the different tanks against June. Now, one of the things is when you are going over this comparison, I just want to say a few things about Nozomi. Nozomi is still the best utility tank and she will be the best tank for overall for general usage, not because of her ability to take hits, but of her ability to stun, her ability to heal the front line, and her ability to taunt, right? Because it's not her ability to keep herself alive that makes her stand out from everyone else. Peko right here, right? Thing is with Peko is that she has to keep sustaining herself with rice balls and she buffs herself to a degree where she can actually take hits. Note that Peko performs somewhat the same as Nozomi, except, you know, Nozomi has more utility where she can provide buffs to others, taunts and everything. And the thing is, Peko is also at 3 star, right? So that's a huge difference from most people's Pekos. And Miyako was definitely the one that shined the most during the showcase, just because of the fact that she can take hits, she can, you know, be invincible. She has like high avoid, so a bunch of attacks are missing. It's not just her capability to be a high, like, physical defense tank. It's her ability to become invincible, her ability to avoid attacks, right? So she probably has the best outcome out of everyone, I would have to say. And then here's June. Now, the thing is with June is I thought she would be more extravagant. The difference would be bigger. It's actually not that different because unless her barrier is up, she can't really tank any hits in per se, right? And this is like my honest, like clean, like non-edited, like showcase of her. Now, while she was topped up the highest, if she can't like pretty much proc her union burst, she won't perform as well. And then here is Rima. Rima, of course, like it didn't perform the best because Rima's supposed to be used for PvP and everything. 
But regardless of the point, I think she did well for the place that she was in. She was at two stars. She was the lowest starred one. At the end of the day, like, I still liked how everyone performed. And all I have to say is June is waifu over meta. By that, I mean, if you like June, you should pull for June. If you are trying to chase meta, like, June is also for you clan battle PvE wise. But if you're a free to play player, you already have Nozomi, you already have Miyako, and you feel like, is this character going to change the way I look at things? In some ways, sure but we don't have the content to really showcase where june really shines it's june really shines in event modes right where she can tackle bosses where she can go about her day and use her union burst and recover all of this stuff that she gets dished out to her i don't think june is going to shine in the content that we currently have because we don't have any boss modes but in the future, she will become somewhat, you know, more relevant. But even then, Miyako and Kuka and other tanks can still somewhat do what June does. Wanted to showcase though that Nozomi does not have good sustain because that was the biggest part was she actually does not have any self recovery. This idle encouragement is for all allies within range by 1200, right? Note that it does not heal herself. She never healed herself once. So it's one of those things where it's like, oh, I thought Nozomi was super tanky. She is, but she doesn't heal herself like the way June does. And June can't take as many hits as Nozomi, but at least June can, you know, recover her own HP. But when it comes down to it, what's like the verdict on June? I think June is just going to be an okay character for folks to use in order to, you know, just have a somewhat easier life while going through, I guess, the game. It's not really a necessary character. I have used it in JP and I have seen June's power. Granted, June was really strong in those areas because she had more stars. She had unique equipment. She was obviously stronger than most of my characters. But at the end of the day, it's not really a character that you have to have, right? Uh, that's what I explicitly want to say because I don't want people to feel like, oh, I didn't get June, I'm missing out. She's going to be added to the permanent banner. June is not going anywhere as far as like, you know, you will never be able to get her. June will always be available. The next character to save up for is technically Summer Keru. She is going to be, you know, a character that's going to help define mage teams, especially in event modes, because I said this before, but precon revolves around tackling boss events like this. So the more characters that you can build that have the ability to elongate or make your damage more significant, like Summer Keru, the better, right? You can see here that, you know, I guess June is performing really well against the very hard dungeon boss. In some ways, though, you could say that June would perform like pretty much well everywhere. Like as far as just taking hits, she would probably stay much more topped up than other characters like Nozomi and stuff. But at the end of the day, the performance really isn't that much of a difference. It's more along the line where June is just able to face tank, right? That That's what it boils down to is do you need a tank? Then June is the one for you. If you already have a bunch of tanks, then, you know, don't really go too ham on this banner because Summer Care is the next one. I know some folks are saving for pre-fest. The advice I have to say for folks who are waiting six months to a year for pre-fest, I want you to at least have some characters, you know, have not just like, you know, your base five. I am hoping that you can at least build 12 characters up just so you can enjoy the game, just so you can spice it up a little. I think where Princess Connect shines is its waifu collecting capabilities. If you sort of stick to the original four or five, whichever characters that you choose, the game will not shine the way it's supposed to because you want to go into the story and get to know your waifus. The character story is actually pretty good and it has some of my favorite stuff. So. I can't wait to break down June and to see like what her character arcs actually go through. That was my really small summoning session for June. I hope you enjoyed all the different comparisons that I had with her and my final thoughts. No, it's not a must pull, but it's definitely a great pull for folks who don't have the tank. And June will serve you pretty much till, you know, the ends of time because of her physical defense debuff. That's what makes her different from all the tanks that are currently available is that. If you made it this far in this video, consider subscribing, dropping a like. We will be doing the 10k giveaway announcements tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. We'll do the 12,500 one whenever we hit that goal. And I will see you in the next one.